everybody. Welcome back to Mood Crunch. I'm Larry, and this is my review for Survive the Night. Directed by Matt Eskandari, known for Trauma Center, 12 Feet Deep, and Game of Assassins. And written by Doug Wolf, known for, makes you wonder where they find these guys from, known for one movie, The Long Night. Well, I guess that sums it up. Hope you enjoyed this review. <laughs> you know, I actually feel kind of weird just discussing this movie. It's another Bruce Willis home invasion movie. He now stars in not one, but two home invasion movies. The other being a hostage. I need is still inside that house. If you don't get what belongs to me, you'll never see your family again. A movie that's much better than this one. And if you've seen one home invasion movie, well, you've kind of seen them all. But if you're not familiar with home invasion movies, here you go. Survive the Night is about a family, mother, daughter, and father, here played by Chad Michael Murray, forced to move back with his parents after he loses his malpractice lawsuit. If you haven't figured it out by now, Bruce Willis is his father. When two criminal brothers, of course, because you couldn't have it any other way, go on the run with 20000 in cash, the out-of-control brother, because there's always an out-of-control brother, gets out of control again and one thing leads to another. One of the brothers ends up gravely injured and in need of medical attention. In comes Chad Michael Murray, yada yada yada. So I watched this movie because Bruce Willis is in it. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Cannot use your U.S. Air Force personnel only drill time card. How am I driving? 1-800, I'm gonna fucking die! I'm not gonna lie, I had no other reason for wanting to watch this movie beyond the fact that Bruce Willis was in it. And Bruce Willis had no obvious reason for being in this movie except for some cash. And from the get-go, this was, well, it's a Chad Michael Murray movie, unfortunately. Not a Bruce Willis movie, even though I was kind of shocked that he was actually in more of this movie than I originally thought. But all that being said, every scene he's in felt like it was rushed, and as soon as it was feasible for him to make an exit, he would immediately leave. And I'm pretty sure he spent about half the movie leaning up against a tree in the front yard hiding from this movie. This is going to be one of those reviews where I spend more time thinking about it, thinking about trying to remember this movie, than actually reviewing it. Let's start with the family though. Willis, Murray, and nobody else here really matters. <laughs> That's horrible. There's a 12 year old girl in this movie, their daughter. And she doesn't even matter. They could have killed her off and I wouldn't even care. The family here gets zero set up. There's no revisiting his old bedroom or petting the family dog. Nothing to make you feel anything. Nothing to stir up the pot of family emotion or connection. Which is probably why I saw it coming. Which I'm not really going to spoil it for you. Let's just say there's a moment in this movie where I called the shot. If, you, if you've seen the movie, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Then there's the whole setup of Willis's character, which is done by showing us a newspaper clipping of him being a sheriff, which had no purpose or any meaning throughout this entire story and in this movie. It's not like he makes his way back to his hidden 44 Magnum and spouts off a cool one-liner. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? I mean, that right there would have been cool. I would have loved to have seen that, and that would have probably increased my score a full whole grade, but it just never happened. But for the most part, Murray and Willis, if I'm being nice, are alright. Even if they do make some of the dumbest decisions I've ever seen, like right after Murray finds his daughter and wife hiding in the barn, which these two, the daughter and wife, are absolutely horrible in this movie. Lydia Hull looks like a stuffed plumped and stretched out and ready for an appearance on The Housewives of Beverly Hills. She said she got caught in the crossfire. Something happened. She was at Penny Hill and she got And the daughter here who just is in the movie for I think one reason and that's at the end to run up to them and be like mommy, daddy and give them hugs. They missed the whole point of a home invasion movie. The point of a home invasion movie is to bring the family together in a small space try to work things out, survive, plan an escape for at least 80% of this movie, everyone in the movie is separated. And when they do find each other, like I say, they make some of the stupidest decisions. Hiding in a barn, behind a tree, holding a family meeting while they're being hunted down by a psychopath. I'm going to get us out of here, okay? I will. Okay. I'm going to I love you. 
It's not time to discuss your marriage here, guys. It's time to leave. Well, you know, I saw that one coming. And the criminals, I don't know, <laughs> maybe some advice for you guys. Learn how to tie a rope. I mean, what the, the family escapes, what, three, four times after you tied them up? Maybe come up with a different way to do it or something? But other than that, the villains here, Tyler John Olsen and Shea Buckner, who play Matthias and Jamie, are without a doubt probably one of the best things this movie has to offer. It'll be about 20K. Right. We gotta get to the border tonight. I think we'll have enough for that beach house. Keep dreaming. Oh, come on. Except the right on the sand. Okay, right on it. Now yeah, learn to surf. Olsen and Buckner here had better on screen chemistry and felt more like a real family and brothers than anything else in this movie. Matthias is a very scary psychopath. And on that note, you still almost kind of want him to kill the family, survive the night, and make it to Mexico. <laughs> I would have much easily preferred a movie just about these two alone across the nation on a robbing spree, maybe Bruce Willis, the detective trying to hunt him down, over this movie. I'll give Survive the Night a D. Which, while I'm on that topic, is $20,000 enough to make you holler for joy and leave behind your life in America for Mexico? Comment below, let me know what you think, because that's all they get during a robbery, $20,000. And then they hightail it to Mexico. Is that actually enough? Anyways guys, thanks again for stopping by, and don't forget, on your way out, hit that like button, subscribe, comment, we need more comments on our videos. Doesn't seem like we hardly can get any, so comment, let me know what you think of this review, and also come back for more reviews just like it and reactions here on the Movie Cranks. See ya.